Hello everybody. I know it's a video. Gotta hurry up. Well, today we are talking about Tarkov and I don't know where to start. So we fucking start. Okay. Say you open Tarkov for the first time, right? And you're like, this game looks so fun. I can't wait to play it. You open your stash, <clears throat> right? You look like this, right? Mine is the armband. So, what do you want to do? Well, you would like his gun, because then you would have a gun. So, where do we even start? Scav. Oh, oh it's already a piss poor video, man. <laughs> Tarkov is all about your economy. And... If you want to be able to fuel builds and have the gear necessary, these, I didn't buy these. I just found these, by the way. Um, wow. I just talked about the economy and now I'm saying that you can find guns and you don't need to pay for them. Wow. So the idea is that you won't have any of this shit. Truthfully, all of this is is worthless if you talk to an expert Tarkov player, which I'm not yet, but he would know better. Um, and what you're looking at is this, here's your money. You've got half a million, that means you can spend half a million. And then if you spend more than that, if you're an overspender, you are going to look like this guy. And you're going to have a hatchet, you're going to be running, and you're going to feel like shit, to be frank, when you get fucking destroyed by someone with a pistol. You'll be like, what? This is bullshit. I hate this game. Just take a pistol. Just take a pistol. Right? And you can buy them pistols with, uh, I think it's Prepper. Prepper I like the most. When I started playing, I started with PMM pistol. We'll just give the game a second here. Um, because you don't know how much you have to lose. You know, it's like going to the casino for the first time. And you have like, I don't know, a thousand bucks with you. In your account, I mean, because you're poor. We're all poor at first. And then you're like, oh, well, can I buy this 68,000 ruble thing here? Maybe. And you die right away. So instead, pay a tenth of the cost and get 10 runs with a PMM pistol. And you know what? For, for old time's sake, we'll buy one. And um, we can find it. Yes, it is my will to play with the PMM pistol. Where is it? <clears throat> EP... MMPBM. Chad, do you see it? This is a silenced one. It's not the same. Ah, oh, there it is. Eight bullets. Right. Right. Okay, so I'm skipping so many steps. You uh, can buy the PBM bullets or, or other bullets <coughs> from Prepper also. And they're pretty cheap. <clears throat> and you put them in your gun. And this is how you unload the gun. And you put it in, in, the, in the chamber. And you put it in the gun. You understand? <clears throat> and if you want more, you can find it on... On here somewhere. You just have to look for the right one. It's normally the first one, right? 1993. Yep. 918 PM magazine. I know it's overwhelming at first. This is the first screen that you have. And I think it's right here. Yeah. So it's really cheap, right? A thousand rubles. These are really cheap items. And you go in like that. And maybe you go to Ragman and buy like a Paca. Okay. 30,000. 
Honestly, you can get much better than a Paka. But I think you have to level him up then first. Oh, you do. You have to do tasks for him to do that. Then you level him up and you'll get better armor. And some of it will cost like a lot. But like this one here has armor type 4 for only 50,000. Plus it has pockets to put stuff in it. Um, favorite. This is by far my favorite starting rig for 50,000 rubles. Now, you'll notice that that's quite a lot compared to your gun. Right? <clears throat> and frankly, I think I went with the PM gun and I think I put like a something on my head. Like this. And I went like this. Into the world. So let's do that. That's when you want to play as a player. But you would play as the scav if you can, whenever you can, actually. Because if you can get out with this stuff, you just sell it to the vendors. If you don't want to use it, or you just use it. So let's do the, so I think you understand how the scaf would work, right? You just get in the world, look for things, get out. So let's play with the, <clears throat> well, I don't think you will even understand how to fucking write your name down first. So let's fucking, let's, let's, let's fucking start with a scav run. <clears throat> and we're going to go into woods. Woods, because it's, huge and you can get lost All right let me pull up the map of woods here for you where is it <clears throat> there's a lot of information in Tarkov the first thing that you need to grasp is not to be scared. So let me get into woods. We'll go woods morning because this is going to be later in the day. You know what? This is a fine time for later in the day. I like anything before 9 p.m., which is 2100s. Uh, and had plenty of time before we uh, we get to 2100. Let's go into woods. As you can tell, there's nobody in the lobby. Not only because it's kind of early here for me, 1 p.m. Atlantic time. It's it's I'm on the East Coast, so it's it's really early for for the West Coast, it's like 10 9 p.m. But also a time that players don't really like because they think, oh, it's gonna get dark. But it's not dark. We're going to go in and we're not going to meet many players. This is almost like playing offline. Except you're online, you're going to keep all your stuff that you find. So some people would, would call it luck. <clears throat> but these are variables that you can control. That you can understand. Um, <clears throat> map Genie is my favorite map. I've looked at different resources. I'll show you as we go through these. These walkthroughs, I don't call them tutorial as I call them walkthroughs. I don't think there's a preferred way to play the game. But this is my way to play the game. <clears throat> and you can hide everything because it's pretty full. Right, so this is the maps of woods. And it's such a pain when you get like in the game for the first time, you don't have a compass. So I would, as a starting player, it's, it would be one of the first thing to buy a compass and understand where you are on the map. Right. So say, for example, you're, you're like somewhere where it's close to the mines and you can tell by the signs. If you pull out your compass and you look towards 
the mine, if it says west, <clears throat> you know you're on this side. But if you're close to the mines up here, and it says north, then you would know you're on this side. Right? But you don't need a compass. If you can understand like where everything is, this is the big mountain in the middle of the map in woods. And I'll simply say I recommend woods because there are a lot of cages <clears throat> and a lot of space to get lost. So these cages, let me show you one. Ah, scav. Ah, the scav, please. So you can notice this is the, the river and there's a bridge there. So there's a river and a bridge here. Could also be this one, river and a bridge. But you'll you'll distinguish them both because you're next to So these are two villages, but this one is old and destroyed, decayed. Okay. So we know we're here. This village is pretty pretty clean and proper. And now <clears throat> what you need to be doing. <clears throat> That's a scav. Scav friendly. Because we're a scav right now. Hi. Would you like to follow me? No? Okay. You can give them commands. Sometimes they follow you. So you can tell here that this is the little shack that we're looking at. Right? I think I'm going to be running like this for... For the time being here. And there's loot like everywhere around. These are scabs. There's loot everywhere everywhere around. But I would think the first thing you want to be doing is leave the map. Right, so if you double tap O, it'll tell you the extraction. The extractions for him are Factory Gate, Scav House, and UN Roadblock. Oops, sorry. Factory Gate is never used because you need someone from the other team with you. Like a, a real player. And if you're a real player, you need a Scav player. Anyway, nobody fucking, sorry, fucking, uh, you know get together at this. So forget about factory gate altogether, altogether. I've never used this. It's impossible to use. Scav house and a UN roadblock. So UN roadblock happens to be here and the scav house happens to be here. So th this is very convenient because they're both at the other side of the map. And what I mean by that is that it's separated by a lake. And this main area has bosses or a boss in it. And a lot of players are going to gather here. Farm the boss. It's got very good loot. So, and, and other players will also go around the map a little bit. Or may just touch a few things and then go through the boss and see what happens. If he's there or not there, he might not be there. And then players would leave if he's not there. So what we're going to do as a scav player at first will be to leave the map. You're going to go to the extraction. So now that we understand we're here, we have to go here or here. We have to go like opposite of the river, which would be that direction. And so we can do that. And get to the extraction. We will go to the extraction, but after you've done this once or twice, you want to know how to make cash. Not only by selling your gear, right? You can sell all of this to the merchants. You probably have about 50,000, no more than that, 100,000 maybe every time. You can make 100,000 just like that we're going to be doing mm. 
is going through the camps. <clears throat> going to be going through the camps to find valuable items to then carry outside of the raid to sell at the vendors or on the market. That's a scam, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of boxes can be opened. A lot of boxes are worth it. The first box that matters the most, I believe, is this one. The big brown box. It has all kinds of goodies. Not only does it contain food, which will maintain you, but it also contains sugar, chocolate. These are highly valuable items that we use for highly valuable crafts. Look around. Bags, I really love too. <clears throat> because you can find uh, mostly anything, including bitcoins, which will sell for a great price on the market. Okay, check this little house okay, on the bed here. When they stop like that, you know it's a friendly scav. This box, this box. Most mags and parts aren't worth much. I don't know why he yelled. They, they could just be yelling for no reason. <clears throat> if you hear them shoot though because they've seen a player so now we're moving this way to power right to the scav bunker <clears throat> so knowing these two points on the map this tower in the camp you draw a line between the two right just like we do here on the map then you know that perpendicular to that line is south right camp tower south right camp tower south Or maybe someone else would, could, would say, if I come from the camp into the tower and then look left, there's south. If I come from the camp into the tower, look left, that's south. You're seeing this? So even without a compass, you can still make your way around. Compass are a little pricey. Press B, changes your weapon to single fire and full auto, depending on the weapon. We happen to have a fully automatic weapon. <clears throat> Stuff here, grenades. Little bunker will go in, little bag. Coca-Cola is good, we'll take it. We'll clear the bunker first. Little chain worth something. Boats have keys in them. <clears throat> you want to be collecting them. Or whatever this is. Health Resort Store Room. I've never seen this. We'll keep it. 206 is pretty bad. We see it all the time. We'll grab a milk. We'll drink a milk because we notice this is going down a little bit. There we go. There's a bag here. Water filter for crafts. Little chainlet worth less than the uh, gold chain. 
little material here. I love the toolbox. They, uh, they can have valuables. Here I always check, especially as a player, because the scavs start gathering at the exit here and kind of camp for you. Lamps. Ah, there you go. A sugar. So normally as a player, you would put that sugar in your pouch <clears throat> and save it. Mm. Especially if you have the distillery or the booze generator, but that's like later in the game. It's incredible how different it is when you start. Like I would have taken those screws if I started. Screws are necessary to build your hideout. And we're actually going here. We, 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 we did the camp, we did the scav bunker, now we're moving here to the USEC camp, <clears throat> which has a lot of loot. It's off in a hot spot. But we'll go up here and we'll take a look at this cage. This lonely cage on this top rock here. There's a little hill with absolutely nothing on it. But there's a big rock right here. And a cage next to it. And in there it can spawn pretty much any item in the game. I don't think I've seen many keys. Though, but uh, anything else for sure. <clears throat> Keep going west or south west. There's the USEC camp. You'll notice it's getting darker, so we want to move out. Now, woods being so huge, it's good because you can train different skills like endurance and strength. The more you run, the more you run, the more you train it. All right, scav camps. We have access to a few meds, med supplies. <clears throat> These go for some cash on the on the market. Little spawn for a M4 right here. A few items on the table. You'll know when we when you need those for your guns, what's valuable and what and not. This is a laser tag. <clears throat> we'll like those. We'll bring one. You know there's a 10 minute mark which means that at this point you have to locate your extract because if that counter reaches zero, you will leave without completion. But right now we're here. And on the other side is where we're going to go loot the rest. Um, yeah, you'll notice I'm doing a lot of big box and the best areas are the areas with the big boxes. Lamps you need for your hideout at some point, screws, people always need screws, broken LCDs are for your hideout at some point, little bag spawn, little uh, armor spawn, weapons case, find some additional weapons. Scope and a sight, I believe. That's good. People love scopes and sights. And the markets will give you fair, fair money for it. The vendors also, I mean. So we just moved to the other section of that camp, as you can see south. Right here. We're at this house. Or um, tent. I always take a look at... Near this bed, there could be gold chains. We can access this here. <clears throat> I'm going to try and speed it up just because it's going to get dark. The box here. Take a look. Hopefully more sugar. 
more chocolate. Because if you have access to the market, you want to sell or an ophthalmoscope. Yeah, yeah. Ophthalmoscope will literally go for 50,000 rubles. You would put that in your pouch, sell that to vendors. If you have access to markets, they will actually go for 100,000 around. Weapon spawn. Sometimes some little items in this section. Armor spawn right there. Weapon spawn. That's a sight, I believe. Items on the table. <clears throat> Box here. And you'll notice that we're pretty full. Already. So it didn't take much, right? We just needed to go through the right spots. But now, we're going to make our way <clears throat> south to this cab house. It looks pretty far, but it won't take us very long. We'll make a stop at the barrel cage. Right here. But this next barrel cage straight south of the mines. By the way, the exclamation point is mines. You don't want to step on that side of the camp. You want to stay on the other side. Safe side. The sand side. Quick stop here. This is that barrel cage right here. Ammo. Conditioned milk. So I love conditioned milk because it goes for 15,000 rubles uh, a square. And if you do the math correctly, most players will try to have as much rubles per square as possible so that they sell more. So, so we, we know what is worth per square or we've, we've calculated it when we look at items. We're just making our way south to the extraction. It's kind of dark, so I think I'm going to spare you the rest of that. It's kind of bad footage when you're trying to make a video and uh, <clears throat> even though it's a great time to, uh, to loot, it just doesn't make a great image. Okay, we have other videos for that. We're just making our way south. Uh, we'll pass behind ZB14 here. And the mines are over there. I'll show you in another, another dime. We're just going south. ZB14 is an extraction for players here, but I doubt there's many players. Like most players who come in at this time will just realize that it's dark and they can't work because they forgot their night vision. Or didn't realize what time it was, you know. And so they've left the, the map by now. But as soon as it starts going dark, a lot of players are like, oh no, I'm going to get locked in woods and lost. I don't have a compass. You know, whatever. And so a lot of players leave. Like only really experienced players with woods and those who like woods, of course, are here. Right? I'm going a little bit inwards right now. To the scav house. I don't know if this is used to be like... Jagger's camp or what? Hey boys. How are you? Hey, 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 hey scary. Trying to leave, you know. <laughs> he just leaves. <clears throat> so that's the easiest way that I found and the most calm way to make a little bit of money. Here, you want to make 200,000? Here it is, you know.
Uh, so you would save all of this. You would just control, press control on your keyboard and left mouse click. Everything drops in your inventory like that. Even me as a, an experienced player, you'll notice that I'm, I'm keeping most of this for sales or to use. And if we have space, we'll take this. We would also take <clears throat> the mags, the keys, the bags, and this, because you can also sell this, and the gun. Oh, I'll take the gun, whatever. Just because I don't have space, I'll next. Next, next. <clears throat> so it's important to remember the stats don't count when you're a scav. They don't transfer over to your player, I mean. So even if you uh, spend time and you kill player and you looted, you don't keep your stats. You only keep the money you made with the scav. If you choose so. <clears throat> and then we just go to the vendors and sell <clears throat> 15,000 here let me uh, maybe just sell like the things I found here so what, where were they? the sugar? 10,000 Um, I'll keep that sugar to sell on market because it's found in raid a little check mark instead i want to keep that to sell on the market because <clears throat> if you right click and filter by item for market the market will buy it for 60 70 thousand right so why why sell it now for 10 when you can sell it when you're level 10 on the market and it will go quickly. You just put it at the lowest price and you'll sell it right away. I would just keep that one instead of selling it for 10. All right. Put it in my box because I actually use them. <clears throat> A saline solution is used to craft some items. The Augmentin is used for craft also. So these are things that I use for craft. The Ibuprofen is for craft also. 10,000 she gives you, but again, look at the market. Excuse me. Market will buy this for, in price, 60,000. So against the kind of thing that if it's found in raid with a little check mark, you might want to put that aside if you don't need the money. Aftalmos Cup, as I said, 53,000 rubles for that. Uh, because it's found in raid, we can look at the market. Market will buy it for 65, 70. It would, be, it would be worth more to sell it on the market. You add the offer. You go to the item. You put it at the lowest price. So that it sells right away. People need those for trades. We picked up the thermometer, which goes for 28,000. There's a few items like that that are like purple for some reason. They go for, they're like collectibles or something. And they'll go for more money, right? The book 39 Tau, the key 23 Tau, the gold chain here 24 Tau. So let's sell her this, uh, the milk, and another milk. <clears throat> you can sell the dog tags to her too, or you can keep them for trades. Uh, so here's here's like a, an easy 100,000, right? These are items, maybe not this. These are items that we found in rate. Like here's 84,000's worth. <clears throat> it's, it's quite simple to make 100,000. We'll sell the ibuprofen on the market. We'll click. 
57,000. Careful. Not to add an extra zero or even to miss an extra zero, because I've seen that. So, so I mean, here's an easy way to make the cash, right? Uh, to sell... So she gives you the most money for your items. The mechanic here will buy your, your guns, mostly. Mechanical items. Like this gun here. This is a really cheap gun. 14,000. He'll take it. And Ragman will buy your clothes. Like this armor. 36,000. So overall, we made 150,000. You know, in a map where we met no player. And uh, we were able to just be successful at, at doing just that. Just making cash. And now that we have this 150,000, we're able to purchase a few PM guns. And maybe we have an extra armor that we kept from a raid instead of selling it. We could use it. Yeah. So instead of selling it, I could have used it. 40,000 for armor is, is fine. Because this is the mostly the, the, mo the main area that players are going to fight. We're going to hit your their, their bullets with. So now that we know how to make quick, easy money as a new player, we're going to go in as the main character and try to understand what he is able to do with the money that we have and what we need to be doing to understand the map, avoid the really good players, fight the scavs, their loot and get out with it so next video